Hi, Colister here with another Nomco Arcade long play. With Dig Dug being one of the most iconic non Pac Man arcade games by Nomco, it was not a surprise at all that this game would later get a sequel. Dig Dug II, making the same bad joke as I did in the pole position video. Just to take people off. Alright, so, um, in this game, you move Dig Dug around the top of a cliff island instead of in an underground world, where he's pumping and inflating the enemies into bursting like he does. And instead of digging up in the ground, he has a drill where he cracks the island among stakes and breaks parts of it off to sink the enemies into the ocean. Observe. The more enemies you get in one drop, the bigger the amount of points you'll get in return. And after dropping three sections of the island, a bonus veggie, etc. will appear, like the mushroom you see in this stage. You get double points for inflating a Phygar if you do it face to face, or horizontally, because of the risk of the fire breath. This game has an old version and a new version, just like Bosconian. The version determines the layouts of the stage and the difficulty, with the old version being more difficult. I'm playing the new version. Even in Massive Tomato Fail. Even in the new version, the stage that you see in the game's demo is the stage one from the old version, interestingly. In Nomco Museum DS and Arcade Archives, you can play either version. While breaking parts of the island off, you have to take some notes into account. The smaller section of the island that gets separated is the section that'll drop. That was a bad place for the watermelon to appear. And while dropping parts of the island, you have to make sure that Dig Dug himself doesn't get caught off and falls into the water himself. If you take too long to defeat an enemy, if there are only a few left, they'll start to jump into the water, basically killing themselves. Kinda like how they escape in the original Dig Dug, if there's one left and you're not quick to kill it. There is no anti-bonus for that, if that should happen. The enemies also cannot directly pass over cracks in the island. Instead, they go into their ghost form to cross over them. So, breaking parts of the island up into cracks can be useful to help keep you safe from the enemies. Just be careful about Phygars and their fire breath. It is possible to get the bonus target, in this case the grapes on stage 9. This stage is a troll. Depending on customized game settings, your score stops at a million points. 
you can release that in the Arcade Archives version. And no, I am not getting a million points in this playthrough. Not even close. I go for survival while playing arcade games, not score. Just like with the original Dig Dug, if you're going up against multiple enemies in a row with the harpoon pump, spam the button while moving towards the enemy to take them out quicker, instead of just holding the button or spamming it while not moving. Like this. You can safely pass over stunned enemies, just like with the original Dig Dug as well. There's a returning fruit target, the pineapple. This stage is hard to beat without losing any lives. If you lose a stock, the enemies will not reset, so... There is a good point for that if you're struggling. drink of some kind. That's the final different kind of veggie target that can appear in the game. In the late stages, the different veggie targets that appear for dropping three pieces of land are randomly decided to appear. The drink gets you the most points of them being 7,000. saw the eggplant from stage 3, and I think in the first stage, the veggie target is a turnip. Other than that, I think we've seen all of them in this video.
For anybody that has Nintendo Switch Online membership on their Switch, the 1986 port on the NES for this game is available on the NES app. However, I actively prefer to play the 1985 arcade version, because... Drilling along the stakes in the arcade version is more comfy than it is in the NES version, where it's a little bit harder. I definitely prefer the arcade versions of pretty much any Nonco game to any NES port that they may have. After playing Nonco Museum Archives, both of them, as well as a few of my arcade microplayers, Just so you know, though. The NES port of Zevius and the game Mappy Land are also on the NES app. What can I say? I rule a harpoon pump spamming. This is the first stage in the recording where I allow myself to lose a stock. Because no missing this stage is almost impossible. The enemies and parts of the island you broke remain where they were after you lose a stock. So the game's forgiving. 
None of that BS scrub that gives you, where the enemies reset if you lose a stock, and there are 99 stages, each one worse than the last. Grobda is my least favorite non-co arcade game. I said that before in my Zevius video. And it's for good reasons. Yet some people can beat it. They had somebody come into Arcade Archives in Hamster Corporation during a live stream to beat the game. And believe me, I can't beat stage 99 in that game, even with pause buffering. So, if you like that game, good for you. Just keep in mind that, you know, people have different opinions. Try to beat this stage without dying. This is the final stage that I will be playing in this video. After the 32nd stage, you go back to the format of one of the previous stages. And that's as far as I'm gonna wanna go. So that was Dig Dug's sequel. Pretty fun, like Dig Dug itself is. I like it. I still have a lot more Nomco Arcade planned, and some other games here and there as well, so... Consider checking out my channel to see the almost 30 Nomco Arcade long plays I currently have on my channel, and stay tuned for some other games that I might want to play here and there as well. For example, I made a playlist dedicated to Pac-Man games, which is where I'll be playing the non-arcade games. And play more surprises to come from there, so stay tuned. I am Colister, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.